Hello everyone, wanted to show you a few book purchases I've made over the last month in um, a variety of charity shops um, but not only that but to talk a little bit about I suppose you could call it the art of finding um, military history and wargaming um, related books in in charity shops um, I spend a lot of time trawling charity shops um, I live in Plymouth and Plymouth is no different from anywhere else in the country um, in that there seem to be an abundance of charity shops nowadays um, as the high street has gone into decline and uh, businesses have closed um, charity shops have taken the opportunity of moving into vacant premises um, and raising money for their respective charities. But what I have noticed, and if you're the same as me and you enjoy scouting out books in charity shops, you'll have found it as well, is that um, some shops you can go into repeatedly and never find much of interest and in fact some shops have a very small book book section in them whereas others will um, I mean in fact some will actually specialize in in just books and DVDs and have specific shops where they just sell books DVDs games that kind of thing and have clothing household items all sorts of bric-a-brac in in a different shop um, but some, some charity shops are much richer the fines are much more plentiful than others and why why is that is what I want to sort of discuss with you as well to sort of help you in in um, seeking out these the, those particular shops and um, saving you a little bit of time and effort in in just going into every shop on the high street as it were um, so I've, as I've said in previous videos where I've talked about purchases that I've made in charity shops um, I have got a one particular um, shop in in Pl in the Plymouth area which I'll show you uh, now on uh, Google Maps it's in a place called Plimpton and it's just off of the uh, the Ridgeway which is like the main sort of shopping drag I suppose you could call it of of Plimpton um, and it's a British Red Cross charity shop it's not actually got a label on Google Maps but I, at this point I should be the camera should be hovering over its location so you can see where it is um yeah it, it's a specific british british red cross have got shops all over the country so they're a large charity but this particular shop is one of those ones where they have um divided off all their books and dvds of which they have many and put them into a specific shop and <clears throat> over the years i've found it's a really um fruitful place to go to even though it's a long walk i spend it takes me about two hours to walk over there from where i live um it it, it always it usually repays the effort of going over there um and it's got a very large section just of uh um military history but there's often uh, wargaming related stuff they usually have a lot well they, they haven't, in the last couple of time my visits I haven't found any but they usually have a good stock of Osprey publications for instance and they're so cheap that I just buy them up regardless of if, if I'm interested in the period or not um, but I, I purchased this uh, day of infamy in there recently um, so it's a, the, the story of the raid on Pearl Harbor um, got that in there recently but I have now found um, there are some places in Plymouth where 
which are better than others but they're all pretty um how can i put it they're all pretty bland um don't tend to have a great many books in them unlike this british red cross shop and um what they have tends to be very um it's the sort of trivia you know it's the sort of um oh, i don't want to sort of knock any particular publishing house or anything but it's it's the sort of um you know the sort of low end of of military history interest as it were um but recently a friend of mine or rather his his wife discovered it first of all um recommended a bookshop a charity shop rather not a bookshop uh, just on the other side of Lara bridge um so a bit further down the river plim towards the sea um just on the other side of Lara bridge there's a there's a little sort of retail park and in there there's a a charity shop run by the charity hugs for henry now this is the one of the other things that i wanted to say about the art of searching for uh books in charity shops that i hugs for henry it it may even be local to the southwest i don't know but it's certainly not of the size of a charity such as oxfam or cancer research or something like that um and that's one of my tips would be um ignore those larger chains unless the the shop is specializing in just books like the british red cross shop in plimpton go for the smaller charity shops um another another charity shop in plymouth which is not as good as this hugs for henry has turned out to be but it does often have some quite interesting uh military um, specific kind of books in it is the cat protection league which again is you know is is not up there with the oxfams of this world so that 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 tends to be um the case that smaller shops smaller charities will have a better selection of books because all the books that they have donated to them will be um sent to a, a smaller number of locations fewer locations um if someone donates their book collection to sell for, you know for charity to a larger charity such as oxfam they're going to divide those books up across you know a large number of shops and they'll they'll stay in that shop and unless they're sold for three months or so and then they'll take them off the shelves and pass them around to another shop so in other words if you go to any one of those shops you're not going to see a large selection of books on sale at any one time and the better books the more interesting books are going to have been snapped up already in another shop in that chain um, before they get to the specific shop you've gone to whereas if you go to a smaller charity like the cats protection league that i mentioned or this other one hugs for henry which has just been recommended to me then you find it's a real gold mine of um of books so this one i got in plimpton these others are all ones that i bought recently in hugs for henry and the other thing about hugs for henry is that they are all much cheaper than than other charity shops this book um it cost me one pound and immediately caught my attention um because i'm very interested in the pre-dreadnought era russian ships so this is three cruisers um sister ships the aurora the diana and the Pallada. The Aurora, of course, famous for having fired the first shot at the Winter Palace in the during the uh, October Revolution in 1917. Um, 
but this particular book doesn't have much in the way of colour. I don't think it has any colour in it, but it, but it has a mass of um, detail on, you know, sort of line drawings, right down to the the cutters and the the various um, ships, boats, and so on. Um, I suspect that this book is. It says it's part of the maritime series from what well, I think unfortunately is a Russian publication Stratis possibly uh, published in Poland yeah so not Russian then um, but um, I suspect this series is aimed more at the maritime modeler uh, but it's of you know immense interest to anyone who's into uh, Russian pre-dreadnought ships one pound absolutely full of a um, lot of photographs that I've never seen before um, outlines of the histories of the various ships um, full of detail full of information great find great find um, so that one I purchased two or three weeks ago and I went back again to the shop today just out of interest to see what kind of turnaround they had. They had an absolutely massive amount of books, particularly on naval subjects, um, but also a lot on military matters as well. Um, and I was interested to see how many of those had moved from the shelves how many, and how many new titles they had in and, and I was very pleased to discover that there were a lot there has been a lot of changes and a lot more of interest to me in there so I picked up seven of these um, special publications from Purnell's uh, Purnell um, again all one pound each um, now Purnell uh, were a publishing house um, went under in I think around the 1980s 1990s um, Robert Maxwell unfortunately got his hands on the on them and uh, they suffered as a result of, of his closures etc uh, etc et but anyway um, Back when I was familiar with Pinnell in the 1960s and 70s, they commonly produced a lot of um, what are known as part works. So histories that would be published in a magazine format um, and you'd buy, you'd buy a different magazine each week or each fortnight and they would build up into um, an encyclopedic um, collection on a particular subject so they did ones on the second world war on the history of the 20th century even though we weren't we were only just over halfway through the 20th century at the time that they did it um, the one that i've still got on my bookshelves that i purchased as a schoolboy um, was the history of the english-speaking peoples which was winston churchill's core book was in there but they each week they would have articles written by quite prominent historians of their day um, writing articles on specific subjects as they went through the entire history of the English speaking peoples but these um, seven books that I purchased today um, were all kind of published around the early 1970s so after um, those part works had been released and they were basically uh, how can we do it sort of how can we say it? Re repackaging those um, part works so that they were putting articles and illustrations on a particular subject into um, into these sort of fairly slim volumes and selling them off for 45 pence um, but just look inside at the wealth 
of illustrations in there um, so lots lots of you know and I can guarantee having read the part works I can guarantee you that these articles in themselves will be rich with information but I bought these books mainly for the illustrations um, great inspiration for modelers and also for war gamers naval war gamers but more military coming up in a moment so these were this is warships of the first world war uh, the battle of the atlantic again one pound lots and lots of color in here um, that, that there particularly drew my eye the swordfish um, I've got back into uh, aerial combat games recently and I'm planning to uh, print off uh, some swordfish on my 3d printer so that'll be a uh, help in how to paint them up again more aerial combat but um, obviously Battle of the Atlantic lots of plenty of naval history in here as well um, right so next one warships of the Second World War very similar layout and uh, and so on but um, spreading the net a bit further in terms of theatres of war and so on so there's lots of the Pacific here Guadalcanal I mean you'd be you know an idiot to turn these down at one pound each battleships 1856 to 1919 so a particular uh, interest of mine the Russo Japanese War is why I've hesitated on that page been good on it weapons of war so this is what I was saying there is you know there's not just naval interest there's military interest here so this is absolutely great for giving an idea about All kinds of weapons that were used uh, tanks artillery small arms all kinds of things in here again another one on um, artillery but this time from the first world war more um, the sort of heavier ordnance And finally, this one here is the one that I'm at the moment is kind of a of particular interest to me. The battles of the Pacific. Um, I'm painting up a lot of uh, American and Japanese planes at the moment. So things like this, the Bruce the Buffalo, and the Zero. Uh, it's all grist of the mill at the moment. The Val, the Japanese dive bomber. 
Douglas Devastator. As well as naval vessels, tanks, all kinds of things like that. Guns. Now, here, this is another example about, um, I can remember quite a few years ago now, putting together a Warlord model of a particular Japanese gun and just not having a clue where all the pieces went. Um, this would have been very useful to have had it at the time. Another Brewster Buffalo there. Yeah, so there's those. And also today, I just picked up this. Um, not such a, a rare find. Um, and it costs £1.50 rather than £1. But it's it's a publication from English Heritage. Uh, just basically promoting a lot of their sites uh, where particular battles took place on English soil. British soil, beg your pardon, um, and primarily illustrated with reenactors. Uh, forget that guy's, guy's name. Is it John Lodes? You often see him on television. Um, but I thought it was worth picking up. Um, I noticed earlier, I was looking through here, that there is a, yeah, there's a chapter on the Battle of Malden. And uh, quite a long time ago now, I put up a, a video on my channel about the debate over where the Battle of Malden actually took place. But um, English Heritage are particularly um, keen to... Uh, <laughs> emphasize that it it took place on the on the causeway which exists at the, at the moment presently between um the, the the mainland as it were and north the island which is now a wildlife sanctuary but um that's only because they own the land there so and they they hold reenactments there um so it's in their interest to promote their, their interpretation of where the Battle of Morden actually took place, but it's far more likely to have actually happened up here um, in an area that's got it's not at all attractive to a visit. It's just an area of light industry and housing estates and so on, and um, you know they're not going to they're not going to attract any visitors to it that way so um, they're sticking with their interpretation because there's a convenient causeway there to allow people's imagination to uh, to run free but I thought I thought it's pretty good pretty nice book so anyway what I, what the main message is um, to have a lot more success at finding um, interesting books on military and naval matters and wargaming related subjects in charity bookshops, um, find shops, either find shops that are run by the larger chains that are devoted just to selling books and DVDs and not the not the usual shops that are full of secondhand clothes and bits and pieces of furniture etc etc or go to shops that are much smaller and of a lower um, status as it were than the bigger uh, more prominent charities such as Oxfam go to go to shops like Hugs for Henry or the Cat Protection League, or local charities that you might, you know, might be specific to the area of the country where you live. Um, local hospices, for instance. <coughs> Although, having said that, the local hospice in Plymouth, St Luke's, has charity shops all over the place. Um, so, 
you know what I'm saying. Try and find shops that aren't going to have a great number of premises and therefore going to concentrate all their books into one shop or go to a shop that is going to concentrate all its books into one shop and it saves you trudging miles from one shop to another um, and being disappointed in each one that you go into. Okay, I'll stop waffling. Thank you very much for watching. See you on the next video. Bye for now.